This is KDE Plasma 5.13 as it appears on KDE Neon. If you're not familiar with KDE Neon, it gives you the latest KDE Plasma desktop and associated applications on a stable and somewhat old Ubuntu base. In this case, it's still based on Ubuntu 16.04 even though Ubuntu 18.04 long-term support was released over a month ago. So I personally wouldn't use this as my main operating system, but it's useful for seeing the latest developments in the KDE Plasma desktop. Now you can get this by going to neon.kde.org and click on Download KDE Neon. And there are actually two editions. The user edition, which is the one I have, which offers the latest version of KDE Plasma with a very limited range of general applications. And the developer edition, Git Unstable, which offers the pre-release daily build of KDE Plasma. Since I already installed it, I'm not going to do it again but you could click on User Edition Live Install and it would begin the installation. Let's see what would happen. Now this gives you a choice of places to go and I went up here to Neon-User Edition 2018-0614-1022-AMD64.ISO and clicked on that, but I'm not going to do it. Now if you search for what's new in KDE Plasma 5.13, you've got a number of little YouTube tutorials you could click on. Look at those if you want. There's a few things that are new. The Plasma browser integration is a suite of new features which make Firefox, Chrome, and Chromium-based browsers work with your desktop. Downloads are now displayed in the Plasma notification pop-up. Media controls Plasmoid can mute and skip videos and music. You can send the link to your phone with KDE Connect. Browser tabs can be opened directly using KRunner via the Alt Space keyboard shortcut. To enable Plasma browser indication, add the relevant plugin from the add on store of your favorite browser. I'm not going to do that. System settings redesigns. Our setting pages are being redesigned. The KDE Visual Design Group has reviewed many of the tools and system settings, and we are now implementing those redesigns. KDE's Kirigami framework gives the pages a slick new look. We started off with the theming tools, comprising the icons, desktop themes, and cursor theme pages. The splash screen page can now download new splash screens, from the KDE store. The fonts page can now display previews for the subpixel anti-aliasing setting. So let me see what that's like. Setting, system settings. Well, there's nothing much new under look and feel. It doesn't seem to be a lot new under desktop themes. Cursor theme looks a little bit different. Uh, splash screen, I don't pay much attention to that anyway. Let me go back here. I'm going to skip colors and fonts and go to icons. Now there's a little more in the icon section. 
I took this screenshot when I was using the Dolphin File Manager to transfer files into my internal system, and I noticed that the file folder icons show these little thumbnails of the contents. An interesting and clever little touch. Freeze. Clicking on it doesn't do anything. It's already enabled. Freeze dark. Not going to worry about those. There's a new look for the lock and login screen. I use the login screen once per session and I try to avoid the lock screen altogether if I possibly can. The KWIN compositor has gained much improved effects for blur and desktop switching. Wayland work continued with the return of window rules, the use of high priority EGL context and the initial support for screencasts and desktop sharing. So let me go to the compositor. The compositor is under display and monitor. Oh, I haven't. I'm going to discard any changes I made and go down here to compositor. Notice I have the animation speed turned off. I don't like this animation. There doesn't seem to be much you can do with the compositor here. So I'll go back to desktop behavior and uh, desktop effects. Now this is the blur they were talking about. Let me make it strong and see what happens. Now, it depends on what's being blurred, I suppose. So let me go here to the application menu under alternatives and go to the application dashboard and switch. So that's the thing that has blurred the application dashboard. If I open something up on this desktop, let's say Dolphin, and now I click on the menu, uh, you can see a nice blurry dolphin behind it. That's nice. And if I go back to settings, system settings, and desktop behavior, desktop effects, and blur, Now I'm going to make this blur strength lighter and see what happens. Apply. Now when I go to my menu again, the blurred background is not quite as blurred as it was before. This is one of those things that, frankly, don't interest me at all, but if you're interested, there it is. I'm going to change my menu alternatives. Click on application menu, which is the one I prefer, and switch. So the appearance of Discover has been improved. Using our Kirigami UI framework, we improved the appearance of lists and category pages, which now use toolbars instead of big banner images. Lists can now be sorted and use the new Kirigami cards widget. Star ratings are shown on lists and app pages. App icons choose your local icon theme to better match your desktop settings. All app stream metadata is now shown on the application page, including all URL types. 
Now I'm going to take a quick look at Discover again. System Discover. Applications. Let's look at multimedia. I don't see any huge difference here. Perhaps my memory isn't very good. I'll take their word for it. There's a lot more I'm not going to go into in detail. One thing I appreciated is that when I connected to my Wi-Fi adapter, I didn't have to fight with the KDE wallet as I used to have to do. However, I can't demonstrate that because I've already connected. This often changes from distribution to distribution with the same version of KDE Plasma. So for instance, I don't have to fight with the KDE wallet when I'm using Plasma version 5.12 on Kubuntu but I do still have to fight with the KDE wallet when I'm using version 5.12 on some other distributions. So I can't say this nuisance is gone forever, but at least it's gone here for now. They still need to get rid of this annoying little desktop toolbox or whatever it's called up here. It's totally unnecessary because you can do the same thing by right-clicking on the background. Of course, it's easy to get rid of it. Go down here to Tweaks and uncheck Show the Desktop Toolbox. Click on Apply and it's gone. Good riddance. I took this screenshot with nothing but the desktop and the console running and the RAM used was about 526,000 kilobytes are about 513 megabytes. So this qualifies as a medium weight desktop. And this has the same functionality as other Plasma versions. Under Panel Settings, I can change the screen edge. Right, top, left, Notice it automatically gets wider as it goes to the left or bottom. So there's a certain intelligent aspect there. And of course you can change the height or the width. And you can add widgets as you've always been able to do. A lot of these widgets have already been added so I'm not going to add any to the panel. However, I'm going to right click on the desktop and add widgets there. And of course, there's the famous analog clock. What you have to do is right click on that and then drag it over. And there's the weather report. You right click, keep your hands off the buttons and left click. What a mess. Then uh, left click on configure and first you have to choose a location. I'm going to click Chicago. I'm going to click on the flag and then click on NOAA's National Weather Service. Now I'm going to click on Search and it gives me Chicago Midway Airport. Select. 
I have to click on apply. Under appearance, show temperature, show wind, show pressure. Oh, I don't need the pressure and humidity. Apply. Okay. Now I have to move this thing over. And there we have it. So it's not entirely intuitive, but it works. So let's just take a quick look at what's installed. There isn't much installed. Under graphics, you have GwynView and Ocular. Under internet, you have Firefox web browser. Under multimedia, I installed Simple Screen Recorder. And by the way, since it's based on Ubuntu 16.04, it wasn't in the repository, and I had to use a PPA to install it, going back to the old days again. But it came with VLC Media Player. Under Office, there's only the Ocular PDF viewer. Of course, you can install LibreOffice or anything else you want. Under Settings, you have System Settings. Under System, you have Discover, Dolphin, Info Center, Console, Case, Discard, K Wallet Manager. Under Utilities, you have ARC, the Archive Manager, K Write, which is a text editor, Spectacle. And under Power and Session, you have Lock, Logout, Switch User, Suspend, Reboot, and Shutdown. Now, this is the application menu. You also have the option of the application dashboard and the application launcher, which is the way it came by default. I'm not going to switch. So I'm going to System Discover. Let me look for LibreOffice. Go to Applications and then Search. Press enter. I suppose I can find the entire suite if I look for it. There it is down there. This is going to be version 5.1.6, a really old version. That's the problem with the base system of Ubuntu 16.04. It's at least a couple of years old by now. So that's a quick look at Plasma 5.13 as it appears in KDE Neon. This is XRAM Tech. Thanks for watching.